Salatu wassalamu ala khatib ala anbiya rumsalin Muhammadin sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Now, so this is, we are coming to the um, topics about, you know, just to prepare for ourselves for Ramadan, inshallah. Right, we, we, we have, every year we talked about this, um, well, the sayings of the Sahaba, right? All this, for example, that the Ramadan is supposed to be the month of the, um, so planting the seeds, in intro, sowing the seeds. Um, next month is called Sha'aban, it's supposed to be the month of um, irrigation, right? And Ramadan is a is a time for harvesting, right? So why don't we plant the seeds on uh, Ramadan? Anybody knows? What do you think? Why don't we plant the seeds? Why why so early? Because it's all about preparations for Ramadan, isn't it? So that when we learn the Quran, when we learn the Dua, when we do our preparations. That's it, inshallah, Ramadan in two months' time or in seven weeks' time, it's all about collecting your deeds, isn't it true? Because if you start to preparation late, and then by Ramadan, you do, some people don't even know about the rulings of Ramadan, about the rulings of fasting, some people don't, don't, don't even know about to control the tongue, then subhanAllah, it's, it's a bit too late to learn, isn't it true? Because that's supposed to be the month of um, harvesting, so you do whatever things that you can, inshallah, to get more good deeds, right? So this is this is as a start. Inshallah, we will we will have this topic about du'a, right? In which a lot of people are making du'a, and yet somehow other they are very frustrated that somehow other their du'a is not answered, right? According to an a, an authentic hadith, how would Allah answer our du'a usually? Anybody? Anybody knows how would Allah answer our du'a? Does Allah? It, it, it does the dua can the dua be rejected? Yes or no, brothers? Yes. Can the dua be rejected? Yes. It is. It is. I mean, provide. Uh, so, so we have, for example, right? So this is this is a common mistake that we can do. Are we? We're talking about it, right? We know from an authentic hadith about how Abraham saw this person who was disheveled and he was making dua to Allah and he, from far he made this comment how can how can Allah answer his dua when his um you know his his food is not halal his drink is not halal his income is not halal how can Allah answer this dua so yes it can be rejected on this basis right that um the income that you make is not halal right what i'm not judging of course right but what makes what kind of work is it that makes our income not halal for example anybody like when you what when you work in banks for example again i'm not judging right when bank and when you know very well that the banks are involved in interest, right? And you calculate the interest of the customers. You, if, remember, we talk about before about riba. Riba is not just about people who are lending it or people who are receiving the the loans. It is also about those people who are dealing with it, including writing it, right? It's also involved in riba. So do be careful in this. Um, other things include, for example, dealing with alcohol. So those people working in Tesco and all this who are on a till, right? Do be careful uh, because it may affect your the halal, the way whether your income is halal or haram. Isn't it true, right? Um, people who deals with um, you know loans, people who deal with um, lying and all this. So so a lot of things, a lot of now we have been given a freedom of choice, right? To to do whatever we want with our life, but do be very prudent. Do be very uh, careful <clears throat> in the choice of um, choice of work that we do, because if Subhanallah, this is one of the first things that we're going to ask on the day of judgment, isn't it? After Salah, we're going to be asked about what we have done with our wealth and our health and all this. The wealth is going to be asked first. For very simple, what comes into our account must be halal. What comes out 
yeah, for expenses must be halal. So these are the two things that we need to to take take care, right? So in the hadith in which Muhammad Sallallahu was looking at this this disheveled man making dua, and upon his comment in this very very simple and very clear comment, how could Allah or how would Allah answer his dua when his food is not halal, his drink is not halal, right? So that means you're eating things that are uh, uh, not halal food and all this, and when his uh, also, last one is when income is not halal. So these are the things that may make your dua be rejected. Rejected means it doesn't even reach Allah, right? This is the first thing, right? Second thing, any other things that make may make our dua be be void. Anybody? And it's some sins that we might have committed. Um, now, specifically, um, okay, so we talk about halal things, right? Income, food, and drink, right? And this is the authentic hadith. So you do need to control yourself and to know what you eat, uh, what you drink, and all this, and your work, right? Um, now, specifically about enjoining the right and forbid, enjoining the goodness and forbidding evil. The hadith is very authentic, inshallah. Prophet said, either you enjoin good and forbid evil, or you, if you refuse to do so, you will find that you will make a lot of dua and it is not answered. Okay, so so this is the second bit that we need to be to be worried about, right? What is enjoining good and forbid evil? Right? It, it is it is in general uh, an obligation, yeah, for all of us to to undergo or to 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 carry out, right? Because uh, we know that we are the best nations, right? In Surah number 3, verse number 110, Kuntum khayra ummatin ukhrijas linnas. You are the best nations ever raised for mankind. Referring to us, you and me. Why? Ta'muruna bin ma'ruf wa tanhawna an munkar. Because you uh, enjoin what is good and forbid what is evil. Wa tu'minuna billah. And you believe in Allah. So these are the, the criteria that makes you and I as the best nations. Right? So for example, so if we know from another hadith, right? Um, if you see an evil, what must you do? You must try to change it with your hands. If you can't, then you must try to change it with your mouth in terms of words. If you still cannot, then you should try to change it uh, in, in your heart in a sense that you, you hate the actions and make dua to Allah to protect you from this. And this is how it is. So if you do not do something about it, or at least hate it, and this is the this is one with the most uh, least iman is those who, who hate in the heart, then you have not fulfilled the conditions of enjoining good for good evil. Is it true, right? So we have this, for example, this LGBT. We have this gay marriage and all these kind of things. It is it is an evil, of course, right? And we we know for sure how Allah punished the people of the Lord in this way. I'm not judging, of course, right? I'm just saying from the facts in the Quran, how Allah uh, punished these people, right? And we are, we are living in a society in which we, well, the rainbow flag is quite common around, isn't it true, right? Um, but but we, do, we do need to have this ability to, you know, to, if you know somebody, especially as a, of a, a Muslim person who have these tendencies right, of being LGBT, right? You do need to say something, right? Um, about um, Tawheed, about these things, for example, about sacrifice that all of us make, right? In, I mean, in the word we call, we call it jihad. Right? Jihad is not just about physical killing of somebody in the war, right? In the, in the holy war. It is also about trying to um, struggle within ourselves, isn't it true? So people who are um, addicted to drinking, people who are, well, have all these girlfriends and boyfriends, right? Um, doing zina and all this, gambling, right? They are, they are actual illnesses that are difficult to be, um, to get rid of. Some people, as you know, especially in America, they have to go, they have to, go to the AA classes. There, there, there is these classes that they go for the alcoholics and they meet all the time. So these are actually uh, people who, who are undergoing this process or trying to get rid of their addictions and habits, bad habits. Um, so same thing as this, right? You, you do need to address uh, people who you think that are 
disobeying Allah, right? On on a major basis, it's a major sins. So you do need to have this um, way to talk to them, right? If you can't really do it for whatever reasons, then the least you do is to hate the things. You don't hate the person, we discussed many times. We don't hate the person, but we do hate the actions, right? So in Islam, is we, we never, 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 never hate anybody, right? It's just about the actions, how people were worshipping idols. We hate the actions. The person itself is different, right? So because if you start to have a hatred of mankind, didn't Allah say in Surah number 49, verse number 13, yeah? Ya ayuhan nasu inna khalaqnakum min dhakarim wa untha wa ja'alnakum shubha wa qaba ila di ta'arafu. O mankind, we have, I have created, we have created you from a man and a woman and have made you into nations and traps for what? Di ta'arafu. So that you can get to know one another. It's intro, right? So you, you do need to take this quote versus Quran seriously, right? Because Allah created everybody is different, right? Um, some people Allah guided to the right path. Some people Allah, uh, they were misguided to the wrong path. And some things that we do need to really accept this. But at the same time, we do need to play our part because there's no prophets now. We do need to enjoy good and forbid evil now. Right? In Surah number 3, verse number 104, Allah said, وَلْتَكُمْ مِنْكُمْ أُمَّةٌ يَدْعُونَ إِلَى الْخَيْرِ وَيَأْمُرُونَ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَيَنْهَوْنَ عَنَ الْمُنْكَرِ وَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْمُفْلِحُونَ And let there be among your group of people enjoining what, uh, enjoining what is good, forbidding, forbidding what is evil, and it is they who are the successful ones. Right? Sorry. And let there be a group of people, among your group of people, um, inviting to all that is good, which is Islam and joining what is right, forbidding what is evil, and it is they who are the successful ones, right? So if you want to be successful, success is always um, deemed in terms of the Quranic verses as success means going to paradise, right? If you want to be going to paradise, inshallah, you need to enjoy good forbid evil. If we fail to do this collectively as a Muslim ummah, then for sure in the authentic hadith, our dua will not be accepted. Okay, so and this is very important. So. Two, right? The, the second things besides the halal income, halal food and all this, that dua will not will be rejected, is the that people as a collective group, we fail to enjoy good and forbid evil. The third one, right, is we're going to talk in detail a bit later, inshallah. Du dua is suspended when we fail to what? Send our blessings to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu Right? So before we make dua, Right? When we raise up the hands, if it's up to you, we're going to discuss later a little bit whether you raise your hand or not. There's an etiquette you need to say. One of them, it is to send blessings of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Just say, Allahumma salli wa sallim ala Nabi Muhammad, all and all this. Right? If you don't say this in authentic hadith, then the dua will be suspended. Suspended means it doesn't reach Allah. Okay? So these are the things. But other than that, in an authentic hadith, right, we know that the dua are answered in three ways. Right? Either the dua is answered, whether it's immediate or later. We know that Ibrahim alayhi salam made a dua to Allah, I think in surah number um, 2 verse number 1 to 9. Yeah. Rabbana, let, let, let's look at it first, inshallah. Surah number 2, get my Quran. In verse number 1 to 9, right? And he made dua that Allah would Send a messenger, isn't it true? Right, Rabbana, Rabbana, wa ba'athim rasula minhum, yaslu alim ayatika, wa yu'allimuhum al kitaba wal hikmata, wa yuzakihim inna ka antal azizul hakim. Right, our Lord, and send amongst them a messenger of their own, who shall recite to them your verses and instruct them in the book, and al hikmah, that means full of knowledge. Um, and purify them, verily you are the Almighty, the All-Wise. And he made this Zawai Ibrahim al -Salam about Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to be sent, and he was sent, subhanAllah, many, many, many years later, right? So don't be despair that your dua is not answered for, you know, within one week or two weeks. Perhaps it might be answered later, right? So one effect of dua is dua will be answered. If not, what is the second part of when you make dua? What other things that can happen? Anybody? Another thing that can happen is that a 
a misfortune, a misfortune is averted. Right? So, yes, Allah did not answer your dua, but something bad is preventing from happening. So, for example, remember Al Khidir, how, how Al Khidir was, well, he's received revelations that he, he, he killed that boy, right? And the parents were believers. I'm sure with parents, they make dua to Allah to protect their children and all this. So, but Allah did not answer them, but something else was averted. What was averted to the parents, brothers? Why was the boy killed? Anybody? In Surah al kaf Because the boy would grow up to, um, but Allah knows the future, isn't it? The boy would grow up to oppress the parents. Right? Something bad was preventing from happening. So even though Allah did not answer the parents' dua to keep the child alive and healthy, but a bigger disaster was prevented from happening because what the biggest disaster can happen to us then we are prevented or oppressed from worshipping Allah and this is a big, bigger disaster, subhanAllah, right? So this is the second thing, right? The dua may not be answered but something else is prevented from happening that may ruin our Islam. The thirdly, the dua may be answered in the, in the hereafter, right? That means it's not answered, nothing happens in this world, but if they are patient, the dua will be able to, inshallah, answer any here. Here means because of the patience and all this, it will lead them to paradise, right? So these are the things on how the dua is, is dealt with by Allah, right? Firstly, as I said, it may not reach Allah at all because of the income, for example, the haram income, um, or um, it will be answered in three ways, answered immediately or um, in another, another time. Secondly, some is not answered, but something else is prevented from happening. A third one is only answered in the hereafter, hopefully, inshallah, uh, by the patience that you are making, that the dua is not answered, you're being patient, and patient, you will enter Jannah. Okay, any questions? Now, Allah has promised that he will answer our dua, right? If you turn to surah number 40 in verse number 60, yep. Um, Allah said, yep, وَقَالَ رَبُّكُمْ مُدْعُونِ أَسْتَجِبْ لَكُمْ إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يَسْتَكْبِرُونَ عَنْ عِبَادَتِي سَيَدْخُلُونَ جَهَنَّمَ دَاخِرِينَ And your Lord said, invoke me. That means ask me, right? I will respond to your invocations. Verily, those who scorn my worship, they will surely enter hell in humiliation. So, the more we ask from Allah, right, and the more He can ask, Allah's response to our dua is limitless, right? So, it is something that we, we don't need to be afraid of. Oh, is it, it would, I know some people, some students came to me and said, I'm so scared to ask Allah for too many things. No. He's there for us to ask him. If you know Tawheed, right, you, you know, right, how Allah's provisions is limitless, right? It would never end. And it's something which we need to understand about Allah. Okay? And Abba Prophet also said, yeah, dua huwa ibadah That means dua is worship. Right? Your Lord said, call on me and I'll answer you. It is from Abu Dawood. And Sahih by Imam al Bashir al Bani, right? So it is a form of worship. So we need to ask Allah a lot, right? Um, in another verse, Allah said about how close He is to us. Yeah, in, in is smack right at the middle of the verses of Al Baqarah in terms of Ramadan and fasting, right? In surah number two, in verse number, um, I think one eight six, right? وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ أُجِيبُ دَعْوَةَ الدَّعِي إِذَا دَعَانْ فَلْيَسْتَجِيبُ لِي وَلْيُؤْمِنُوا بِي لَعَلَّهُمْ يَرْشُدُونَ And when my slave asks you, O Muhammad Wasallam, concerning me, answer them, I am indeed near. I respond to the invocations of the supplicant when he calls upon me. That means without any intercessors, no need to go through any mediums, directly to Allah. So let them obey me and believe in me so that they may be led aright. Now the word qarib is means near. Right? That that but does that mean that Allah is just next to us? 
Yes or no? Is Allah everywhere? No. no. Where is Allah now? On his throne. And that we, we must know, isn't it true? In many verses of the Quran, Allah. So we, we must not, sorry to say this, we, we, we must not copy the Christian concept, oh, God is everywhere. So can I say that he's in my bag, he's underneath my chair, he's in the toilet, and it, it is unsuitable for for the, our creator, the one who provides us with everything, to be in this in his creation, right? So if you look, for example, in surah number, let's look at surah number 32, inshallah, in verse number 4, inshallah, right? الذي خلق السماوات والأرض وما بينهما في ستة أيام ثم استوى على العرش. Right? Allah it is He who created the heavens and the earth, and all that is between them in six days. And then He rose or istawa rose over the throne. Right? So He is always at the throne there above the seven heavens. Right? What is He doing now? Is He sitting, standing? Anybody? We don't know. Sh should we know? I don't think so. No, we don't need to know. Right? This is a very important concept. There are certain things that we do not need to know. If Allah wants us to know what he is doing, is he writing, is he riding a bicycle, is he running, he will tell us. Right? How, how did Allah go from the seven have, seven, uh, on his throne where is Allah is in the last third of the night? He is at the lowest heaven. We have seven layers of skies. Right? He's at the lowest skies. He's listening to you and me, making dua during our night prayer. Isn't it true? How did Allah get from there to the first, first heaven, first skies? We do not know and we do not need to know. right? Um, and this is important for all, us to, all of us to understand. right? Now, brothers, I have to say this. right? Uh, first of all, we need to know Allah is not everywhere. Right in this, so you cannot say Allah is everywhere. This is what you hear from many people. Even some Muslims are asked, "Where's Allah?" Right? Oh, he's everywhere. He's not everywhere. So when we talk about this verse, that he is near, he's not near by physical nearness. Right? He is near by because in the concept of nearness, that he knows everything. We know his name is Al Khabir, which means the uh, the All Aware. Al Alim, the All Knower, uh, Al Samir, the All Hearer, Al Basir, the All Seer. Even though he's there, he can see us. That is why we know in Surah Al Ikhlas, Walam Yakullahu Kufwan Ahad. There's no equivalent or comparable to him, right? So we cannot imagine he is the us. I don't know what's happening. I'm surrounded by four walls. I cannot even see what's, even though this the other side of the wall is so close because it's close. I can't see beyond that, but Allah can see everything. Right, even though he's so high up there. Now, so this is this is very important for us to understand, right? That he knows everything. Because if not, it doesn't make sense. For example, um, it's in Surah number number fifty, if I'm not mistaken, right? In verse number um, sixteen, right? Wa nahnu akrabu. Allah yuzu akrabu niya. Yeah. Wa nahnu akrabu ilahi min hablil warid. We are nearer to him than his jugular vein. Right? Where's your jugular vein on the neck? Is it true? Right? When Allah said we, he's nearer to even to us, to you and me, than our vein on the neck, how can it be some uh, 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 one who creates us is even closer to this? You do not need to be that close to know what we're doing. Is it true? So it's just a, a, a symbolic term to know that about his knowledge. His knowledge is so close that it's, it's even, even nearer than our veins. That means Allah knows everything that we are doing. So we cannot hide from Allah. Okay, so something that we do need to understand, right? When we, we discuss, in, we talk about Surah number 2, verse number, when, uh, verse number 1, 8, 6, and also he's, I'm indeed near. So let them call upon me, right? So that means Allah's knowledge, right? Allah has knowledge of everything that we do. So we do need to understand, even though we are whispering, we're going to talk about later, you don't need to shout in your dua. Allah can hear us. Even though we are saying silently to, our, our, to Allah in our prostration, Allah can hear us and if He wills, He will answer our dua. Okay? Any questions about this, brothers? Right? 
So this is something that we do need to really understand as an introduction. We talked about how our dua is answered, right? How dua can be prevented from reaching Allah. How the dua um, uh, will be answered in, in the hereafter, right? And now we know that Allah is asking you and I to make dua to Him. And He's always there to listen to our dua. Remember, in al Kursi we discussed yesterday, La ta'khudhu sinatu wa la na'um. What does it mean? Anybody? Brothers. La ta'khudhu sinatu wa la na'um. What does it mean? The most important verse in the Quran we discussed yesterday. He doesn't slumber, neither does he sleep. For sure, Allah won't sleep because Allah, if Allah sleep, how can he answer our dua? Isn't it true? Right? He will never sleep, right? As opposed to what you read in the Bible that Allah created the world, we discussed yesterday in six days and seven days he rests. So, he need to rest. Right? So, doesn't matter at what time you make dua to Allah, right? In which place Allah will still hear us and with His will. And if it's good for us, He would answer our dua. Okay? Now, so let us go through, inshallah. Um, okay, so before that, let, let's us revise, right? We know many scholars say that the dua is like a weapon, right? Why is it like a weapon? Because if you have a weapon against an enemy, it's not just about this weapon, isn't it true? It, the weapon, of course, must be sharp. There's no point to have a weapon which is, not, which is very blunt, isn't it true? The use of the weapon must also know how to use the weapon. That means if you make, let's say the weapon is like a dua, we as a person who say the dua must also know how to use the dua, isn't it true? Right, that's what we're going to go through about it. That's about the common mistakes that some people fail to... Um, make dua to Allah by using the uh, proper etiquettes that we were supposed to do. It's not just about, oh Allah, uh, give me money, give me job, give me this. There must be a certain etiquette, right, that, that I would have to use in order for Allah to answer my dua, right? So, for example, if I were to ask um, Elmi, right, about something, right, I need to compliment him, isn't it true? Oh, Elmi, you are so kind, you are so nice, you are so, you know, you are so hardworking, right? Um, you know, you look so nice, um, your shirt is so expensive, you are wearing your Gucci shirts and all this. And then I said, can you help me with this, right? So it's all about being, having this etiquette, right? To be nice, you can't just ask somebody to for help and then you're not nice to this person, right? Um, that is why... Yeah, your relationship with Allah is only between you and Allah. Nobody knows. Doesn't mean I'm wearing, somebody's wearing this top. Doesn't mean it's anything. Because at the end of the day, it's only between you and Allah. Isn't it true? Right? So something that we do need to understand. Um, so in relation to um, the dua, right? Of course, Allah is very important. So you do need to assess your relationship with Allah. How is it? Have you, have you done many sins? How can you expect uh, that you don't pray to Allah and you expect Allah to answer my dua? I remember one of my clients, um, I'm, I'm an immigration solicitor, right? An human rights, human rights solicitor. And this is not talking about, um, just, just for example, she's a Muslim, right? And she did say about, oh, I mean, she's not practicing, right? Um, and she knows, she, she confessed to me, I was trying to do da'wah to my client sometimes. And then she did say something like, oh, you know what? Right? I'm so disillusioned with God. With you know, I I asked for this, he never answered my, my dua. I mean my heart. And I did say her to her actually directly, you're not even praying to Allah, you're not even submitting to him, and you don't even glorify him. I can guarantee you, right? You don't even know the Al Fatiha, the meaning, right? You don't even know the names of Allah. How do you expect Allah to answer dua? Is it true? Right? And, this, and this, we have to be really realistic about our expectations, right? If you're not nice to fellow human beings, yeah, be the, among yourselves, how can you expect the person to help you in, in general? Right? So, same thing with Allah. I mean, if, if you're not uh, praying and you're not um, 
submitting to him. How do you expect Allah to answer your dua? And then literally, it is your fault. It's the intro. Worst thing, right? The worst thing that can happen is that Allah will give you so much wealth that it is not a blessing for this wealth. It is more like a punishment. Because you know, right, as a human being, in, in many stories in the Quran, we talk about Qarun, talk the Fir'aun, that when Allah gives them so much wealth, they forget Allah. And this is the worst thing that can happen. What word did we discuss many times? What did, what did in Arabic did we use to describe uh, an element where wealth is given for punishment more than um, blessing? Istidraj. Istidraj, right? Istidraj. Istidraj is something you may see among your relatives, right? Who may not be practicing. You're wondering, right? Huh. And Shaitan always come to you, right? He's not even praying. How come his house is so big? Right? And subhanAllah, and this is this this is something in which we do need to know. If you read the Quran a lot, you will realize, for example, in Surah Al-Kahf, isn't it true? Allah loves the other person in the, the one who was given a garden, one who was given nothing at all. Allah, for me personally, Allah loved the person more the one that wasn't given anything. Wasn't it true? And on that basis, he was much closer to Allah. He knew about Allah. And if you know about Allah, you know that, well, he's, he is the one who provides. If he doesn't provide, perhaps there's a, there's a reason for him because perhaps when he provides a person with all his wealth, he or she may not remember Allah. And this is, this is the worst test for to be given something that you and you're ungrateful to Allah. All right, so istidraj, remember that word. So don't envy your friends, don't envy people whom you know. Some of them are not even Muslims, and then they have all this wealth, they all this go for holidays and all this. SubhanAllah, right? We serve for as some, in, in, in many aspects as a punishment to many people. Uh, you know that money is never enough. So it's not about the amount of money that you have, it's how, how contented you are when Allah gives you a certain of his, uh, his his blessings to you, right? So always remember this. Um, so, um, so we do need to really truly understand about um, how much we, uh, we, we know the dua. So it's not just about that, that dua itself, I mean, about relationship with Allah. You also need to know what kind of dua that you are using, right? You can't use a dua of forgiveness to get you uh, more risk or provisions from Allah. So it, it must be related to what you're asking. And this is where some people, uh, they don't even understand the meaning and you just say, I mean, is it true? I remembered, I may have raised this before, right? In one of the Taraway press, uh, you know, people are doing kuno dua, right? And people say, I mean, I mean, even though the Imam was saying something like, Oh Allah, we have done so many sins. And you say, I mean, and why do you say, I mean, for what? Right? You don't even understand the dua. Right? So it's not just about your I mean that you say, you need to understand what you are trying to say or you listen to. Right? So, so this is something that you do need to really use a proper dua. Um, the best dua is always, of course, yeah, from the Quran and authentic hadith. That's for sure. But of course, brothers, these are dua that are quite general. All of us have different problems. You need to, somebody want to perhaps um, have a special dua that need to, to fulfill, right? Um, you may have problems in your office. You may have problems with your clients. You may have problems with certain spe uh, specific relative and all this you want to resolve. Of course, some of the dua that you need, you need to do in your own language. But in general, right? Um, there are beautiful du'a that you can find in the Quran and in authentic hadith. So do make the effort to know that du'a, inshallah, so that we are able to uh, get the full reward of the du'a. So for example, right, one of the, we're going to go a bit later, inshallah, about the uh, etiquette of making du'a, etiquette of making du'a. So one of the best, one of the etiquette is you need to ask for forgiveness, right? What is the best du'a that you can use to ask for forgiveness? We discussed before a few times. To Yunus. Yes. yes, which dua is this? Which surah? I don't know the surah. 2187. So what is the dua? 
La ilaha anta subhanak ini kuntu min al-zalimin. Yes. So in in authentic hadith, right? So that means la ilaha illa anta. It's beautiful, right? None has the right to be worshipped but you. So I'm addressing directly to Allah. None has the right to worship but you. Subhanaka inni kuntu min al Glorified are you. Uh, inni kuntu min al Verily, I have been a wrongdoer, right? When you know, Salah Salam made this dua, the angels actually went to Allah. Right, trying to uh, and persuading Allah to help you know Salah Salam. Perhaps when we make we make dua with this, um, all the angels will do the same thing. But provided, of course, brothers, you need to know the meaning, and you really feel that you have done a lot of wrong with Allah. Right, and in authentic hadith, Prophet Salam said that dua that begins with this dua of you know Salah Salam will not be rejected. So we do need to use this dua a lot, inshallah. Another dua of desperation is the dua. Who was desperate to use this dua? No. Which, which prophet? No. Okay, what dua was that? Uh, when he said, was he, was he, no, who, was, who, who got eaten by the whale? I said, I forgot. Whale? Yeah, the whale. No, that is, you know, Salam, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, you know, he, he was in desperate time as well. I mean, you, you know. And we said this now, right? Surah number 2187. Like, like, Landa, Which, which are the prophets that use another dua? Ibrahim? Yes. Right? Yes. So that is a desperate dua, isn't it true? And what, when he said that dua, what happened? Uh, the, the fire became cold. Yes. So, so in a sense, but, but, we all say things that we don't mean it, isn't it? When we say, has be Allah, Allah alone is sufficient for me. He is the best disposer of our affairs. And this is, this is, if you know what it means truly, it is complete trust in Allah. Whatever happens, good or bad, just accept it, it's from Allah. And this is, it's quite difficult because brothers, all of us go to different journeys, isn't it? journey in terms of our work, in terms of money, in terms of relationship with parents, with relatives. Many times, um, we are quite shaken with the Iman um, that we, we forget at the end of the day, it is Allah who makes things happen and to Him, we shall put our trust. Isn't it true? And many times we forget. COVID-19, as if it is the vaccine who is going to remove us from this COVID-19. Isn't it true? Yes, it's a means, inshallah, right? But it eventually, it is up to Allah to remove this pandemic. Isn't it true? I remember uh, looking at some photos in the early stage of pandemic. And subhanAllah, well, people wearing masks, we take photos and all this. We thought that, okay, it's only going to be there for perhaps one month, two months. SubhanAllah, one year, we are still wearing masks. So this is something in which, in which it is it is up to Allah to remove this. And we, this is part of Tawheed, isn't it true? Right? When we know Allah is the Al-Mulk, the names of Allah, the dominion, right? He's our Rabb, he's the one who protects us. Um, and all these names of Allah which we need to understand, then we are we must understand that this, eventually this COVID-19, it is all up to Allah to remove it. But how can Allah remove it when we never change ourselves? Didn't Allah say in Surah number 13, verse number 11, Allah will not change the conditions of the people if they don't change the conditions themselves. Unless we make a fundamental change in our submission to Allah, then I'm afraid that these problems will be going on and on and on and on. Now look, I discussed before many times in our talks, what's happening in Saudi Arabia, in UAE, and all this, how they've become so much westernized, they have sub, they have completely sell out Islam to in many parts uh, to to the West and all this. Subhanallah. So we do need to understand that uh, the 1.8 billion Muslims in the world stands nothing in the eyes of Allah because many of the 1.8 billion people people are not even praying. Right? They are so proud that they suddenly become so westernized. They can celebrate Christmas. They have Nicki Minaj to perform in Saudi Arabia. Right? Looking forward to all the concerts that are happening and all this. Subhanallah. So we have to be really looking into ourselves and see what, how we can rectify our relationship, relationship with Allah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala remove this pandemic from us. Right? As soon as possible, we can we can actually go to the to the mosque in Ramadan to pray our Taraweh prayer this year, which we missed last year, didn't we? Right? Again, it's always Allah's hikmah wisdom when things happen. 
Okay. Now, so let, let's go on to quickly to go through the uh, common mistakes that, that, that people make, inshallah, uh, in making uh, uh, the making dua. Now, um, the first one, right, is always about, as I said just now, we fail to understand um, how Allah will respond to our dua, right? Sometimes shaitan comes to us and we say, ah, we make dua, make and make and make and make, right? Still, right? We are so poor. Still never answered. Still I feel my exam. And all these kind of things are playing in our minds. Shaitan always say, tell us, what's the point, right? And this is where we have this bad impression of Allah, right? And we start to... Uh, uh, slacken in a worshipping of Allah because, well, shaitan says, what's the point of uh, praying and all this when all Allah never help us even? And this is completely wrong. Right? When you fail to understand that, uh, but the consequence of our dua, then that's where we fall into this trap. Right? And then we say, what's the point of praying? This person is not even praying and he has such a big house, he got such a big car. Then, you know, there's no point, eh? subhanAllah, as if this this is the world that we are uh, uh, looking forward to. When there's a whole new world at the other side, and the journey is very, very long, 50,000 years. How can we imagine 50,000 years, and, and we don't have enough provisions, right, to, to last even for one year in the hereafter. So this is that we do need to really understand, right, about how Allah answered our dua. Right, as I said, just now three things. He can answer to us immediately or in the near future, inshallah. Or he didn't won't answer our dua, but something bad is prevented from happening. Or if you are patient, inshallah, it everything is reserved in the hereafter. So nothing is wasted, inshallah, provided of course that your your dua is not rejected because of the things that you have done yourself. As I said just now, you have and halal income, haram income, sorry, you have eaten haram food and haram drinks, then of course your dua won't be answered. We discussed just now in great detail. Okay? Now, sec uh, and, and we must also understand, of course, right, that um, Allah has all these beautiful names. Right? Allah knew exactly what we are asking Allah, right? As his name is um, Al-Mujib. What does Al-Mujib mean? Brothers, Al Mujib. Very important. I, I always say this in my dua. So, so, Al Mujib. The one who, the one who brings. What? Uh, the one who brings like anything that you want. Yeah, the one who responds. Isn't it true? The one who responds. When you make dua, nobody's going to respond to you. It's only Allah. Isn't it true? That's why we make dua to Allah. So Ya Mujib is a very important name that we need to ask Allah for the uh, the name. Yeah, like Al Karim, the generous one. Right? Who's going to be more generous, generous than Allah? Okay. So this is it, right? Second one, common mistake. You fail to analyze your relationship with Allah. As I said just now, right? I won't elaborate in detail, but you are not even praying well. You are always late for fajar, right? Or even didn't wake up for fajar, right? A certain time you miss here and there, right? Um, you are drinking. You are having all these friends. Um, that involved in sins and all this. How do you expect Allah to answer the dua? So the relationship with Allah, you and I know, is only between you and Allah. Nobody can judge you, right? So it's something that you need to build yourself. And this is why you need to ask Allah for guidance. In intro, didn't we ask for Allah guidance at least seventeen times a day? Ihdina sirat al mustaqim, right? Guide us in a straight way. Sirat al ladina an amta alam, the way of those whom you have bestowed your favor. So what is people? These are the prophets. We want the ways of, for example, the siddiqun, the truthful ones, or the martyrs, or the last one is the righteous ones, the salihin. Right? This is surah number 4, verse number 69. And this is very important that you and I uh, understand this. Yeah? Only all of us, only you personally are able to know how close you are with Allah. Okay? The third one, fail to follow the etiquette of making dua. Right? That means just make dua, expecting Allah to answer. There's an etiquette to make dua to it before we make dua. What's the first thing, brothers? What must you do when you make dua? Oh, Sorry? The salutations to the Prophet. Before that. Oh, so sad. You... Yeah, continue. Who want to? 
What's the first one? Uh, the first one you you name Allah with his best names. No, that is that is number three or four. You the ask first one. Ask for forgiveness. Sorry. Ask for forgiveness. No, you glorify Allah first in intro. Right. What's that? Subhanallah, alhamdulillah. This is the etiquette. So, oh. so you should go in that order which which we have been taught, right? Um, I don't think there's anything wrong going with another order, but we should follow. Uh, for example, the wudu, right? You want to wudu first in the proper way of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam taught us, isn't it true, right? Um, do say intention first, Bismillah, and all this, and so and so. We don't want to start wudu with the feet or the hands first. Right, so there is always etiquette. Right? We, they said Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam sent to, to inform us how what well, the best way to make dua to Allah for by following its etiquette. So you should say because you need to glorify Allah first, isn't it true? Right, by saying Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah in, in anything. But make sure you know, you feel in the heart that you are you are truly glorifying Him, not just saying things for the sake of saying. Okay. Um. Secondly, what must you do after glorifying Allah? The brother say something. Send blessings, uh, to right? Send blessings. You can say Allah Masalli wa Sallim ala Nabi Muhammad. Um, or if you, if you want, do not do not know how to say in Arabic. Say it's in English. Oh Allah, send bless. Give your blessings to Prophet Sallallahu and his family and all this. Okay. Um, because if you don't say that, what did we say just now? The hadith, brothers. If you don't send blessings to Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, what happened to our dua? It gets uh, notified. It's suspended. It doesn't reach Allah. Okay? So do be careful in this. Then you ask forgiveness from Allah. Right? What dua did we use just now? Sorry, Hilal. Can I come in just a second? Salam to everybody. Yes. Um, when you say send blessings upon our beloved Prophet, Muhammad sallallahu alaihi salam. Yes. Is it um, before we speak to Allah? Because I see many practicing Muslims normally do that after they've completed the dua. They also send blessings on our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi salam. So is it both times? Or Usually you do it before. You can do after. But this is etiquette for saying before you say a dua. Okay, yeah. all this is in, in the hadith um, okay. about how to. Um, okay, this is so at Tarmidhi, right? While the Masjid Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was sitting, a man came and prayed and said, Oh Allah, forgive me and have mercy on me. The Masjid of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, You have been too hasty, O worshipper. When you prayed and, and are sitting, praise Allah as He deserves to be praised and send the blessings of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, then call upon Him. Right? So in this hadith, it's authentic. Yeah. In another version, when one of you prays or make dua, let him start with the praise of Allah, then let him send blessings to Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and then let him ask whatever he likes after that. Okay? So, so it is it is before, before your dua. Right? So, for example, when you did your, finish your salam, right? Just very, very quickly, it's neutral, right? But that's, that is why when you... Um, when you did your, if you do du'a before your salam, you would have said your du'a, be, uh, your send blessings during your tashahud, isn't it true? Right, so you do not need to repeat again and again. Okay, questions? Help me. Yes, I was going to say. Yes. What if you're like lazy, you know, when you're going to make straight du'a, right, and yes. then you don't do all of this. He's just want to go straight to the door. Yeah, so th that's why Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam warned them, no, don't to be hasty, right? And hasty he taught us what? to do this, right? And secondly, yeah. if you don't say message Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the dua will be suspended. So what does hasty mean? Like, like fast? Hasty means that straight away you go to the dua, is, is what you, you are trying to suggest, right? Uh, just make the dua immediately without going to this etiquette. That's why we are trying to teach you the etiquette. I think when you do this, uh, all of this before, it shows sincerity as well that you want this thing as well. Yes. So, yeah. Exactly. Because as I said just now, when we ask, even for with, among ourselves, right? When we ask, for, let's say we want, we want your favor, you do need to be nice to each other, isn't it true? Right? Before you ask yeah. for the favor. Yeah. Right? 
And same thing with Allah, of course, there must be an etiquette of praising him first, say Alhamdulillah, right? And then you, second one, you say blessings from Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, right? And then after that, next one, you ask for forgiveness from Allah because all of us are sinning every day, right? And then next one, we ask of uh, you, if you try to use the dua of Yunus Alayhi Salam in Surah number 21, verse 87, then we ask Allah by his beautiful names, right? What is the most important name of Allah? Brothers. Allah. Yeah, so Ya Allah. You can say Ya Rabb. You can say Ya Rahman. Ya Rahim. And of, of course, there are certain things that you can say specific to your need. If you say that you want uh, to get a better career, you say, Ya Razak, or Ya, ya Razak means oh, you pro, who you provides, Ya Karim, the generous one. Yeah. So all these kind of things are specific to your needs. You cannot say Ya Razak and forgive me. It doesn't match. Is it true? You must match the names and what you are asking for. Okay. Uh, Arab, what's the question? Assalamu alaikum, Mustad. Um, obviously, in my country, most people I've seen who like make the world, they do it um, right after their salah. And obviously, um, well, in, for us, most of us, we, um, we send salutations, you know, uh, we send blessings to our prophet uh, right after the tashahud. Yes. So I just want to be sure, you know, if we already you know, did it there and then yes. afterwards we proceed to like glorify Allah, yes. do we have to send blessings again or is, is one time enough? Yes, we, I, I will send blessings again because your prayer, whenever you say salam, right? Yeah. You have ended your prayer. Right. right. If you were to, there is a, the hadith, is it true? One of the best time is to make dua before you say salam. Okay. Right. Then you don't need, you do not go through all this procedure because you have all the you have to qualify Allah because you, know, you say Alhamdulillah in your al Fatiha, you send blessings of Muhammad Sallallahu in your Tashahud, is it true? Right. Then okay. you have already gone through all these procedures. Okay. Correct. But once you say salam, I think you need to go through all over again. Okay. And it doesn't take long, is it true, brothers? It's only take about a few seconds, right? How how long does it take to make the uh, send all this 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 etiquette? It doesn't doesn't take long. The most 10, 15 mm. seconds, inshallah. Isn't it true? Yeah. Right. Any other questions? Wait, so uh again another question if if that's okay. Um yes. I was just wondering, um Wait, so can you make any du'a you want, you know, in your salah, then, in your prayer? Yes. Uh, so this is like after the tashahud and after the salutation. Yes, there the, the, are the two main positions that you can make du'a. Uh, not, yes, in the sense that it's, it's very matched in, in authentic hadith, right? The closest a person to Allah in hadith, in, in one, another hadith is when you're in your prostration, isn't it true? Yeah. Muhammad well, Hassan asked us to make a du'a a lot in your prostration, right? Now, this dua can be made, of course, in your own language, because Allah do understand English. It's not, there's no scholars who ever said that, oh, you must only make dua in Arabic. Yes, you need to say Subhana Rabbi Al-A'la in Arabic, of course. But other than that, after that, you can make dua in, in English. Right. Or right. your own language, of course. Right? Pardon me. Jazakallah khayyam. Right. Any other questions? Yeah, Ustad. Yes. Um, I had a question. So, you know when you're making a du'a, right? Yes. Is it better to make the du'a specific to what you want or generalize it more? I would make generalize first from the Qur'an. Is it true? Because I want to protect myself from, for example, have a good end. Allahumma inni as al-lukal husnul khatima. As Allah gave me a good end. Da -da 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 -da, as for forgiveness in general from the Qur'an. Or the others. Then I ask for myself. So, so, yes. so <laughs> Sorry? Ustaz, let's say, for example, I'm just giving an example. Let's say. Yes. You, you, hurt, you hurt your leg, let's say, and yes. you want Allah to cure your leg. Yes. Do you just make dua, Allah cure my whole body, or is it better to say just you hurt? Like, because I think it's more specific when you hurt or like when you're in most need of that specific thing, isn't it? Then yes, but when you make dua for Allah to, to, to give you good health, it includes everything, isn't it true? Yeah. yeah. Do you agree? Yes. Yeah. I think also so so stingy then oh you only ask for good health is it true okay I won't give you flu I go I won't I won't cure your leg all right good health is good good health is it true right uh, it covers everything right that is why the, we we talked before brothers at the beginning of pandemic remember now Allahumma inna adubika minal barasi wa jununi wa juzami wa sayyil asqam is it true right the last part is asking Allah to protect us from all kinds of illnesses is it true yeah, 
So this is very important to add. That, that means, of course, I mean, whatever illness that we come across, whatever illness that we, we have, brothers, it is still a blessing, isn't it? It's an expiation of our sins, right? Never think that, oh, Allah never answer my dua. But perhaps, right, it's good for us, inshallah, because it removes our sins. So that in another hadith, Muhammad Sallallahu said, perhaps the person is tested so much, but the time is final breath, he's, 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 he's sinless. He's, there's no sins at all, right? So, um, yes, we make dua to ask Allah to give us good health, but even if it happens, we get COVID-19, alhamdulillah, right? What can we do? It's of Allah, right? But of course, brothers, forgive me for saying this. If you're not protecting yourself, if you're not wearing mask, if you've got no social distance, um, you just go out anyhow in the streets and all this, and then you've got COVID-19, you do need to blame yourself, isn't it true? Do you agree? Agreed? Yes, sir. Yeah, of course. Yeah. So you cannot, cannot, oh, you know, this is, how can Allah do this? Well, you don't, you are, you are, you are not protecting yourself. You need to tie the camel first, then you make dua to Allah. But even if you protect the camel, you still get COVID-19. Alhamdulillah, what can you do? It's God of Allah. Perhaps Allah loves you so much that Allah wants you to um, remove your sins, as I said just now. Okay? Now let us revise again, right? The etiquette that we can do, uh, please try and um, do this because it is all this have been taught by Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So, of course, you must have this first of all sincerity, right? That you do it for the sake of Allah, not because of somebody else. Secondly, you need to uh, praise Allah first, saying Alhamdulillah, Subhanallah, and all this. And then you need to send blessings to Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Allahumma salli wa sallim ala nabiyyina Muhammad. Or if you do not know, oh Allah, send, give some blessings to Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his family, right? Oh, you, and, and fourthly, you say your forgiveness. You can say anything, of course. You can say Astaghfirullah. You can say Rabbi Firmly. Or you can say the best is, of course, Dua. As you say in Surah number 20, uh, 80, 21, 87, you know, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, La ilaha illa anta subhanaka inni kuntu mina dhalimin. Right? And last one, say Allah by his beautiful names. Right? Um, so, uh, Islam, ya Allah, Islam. Ya Rab, yeah? uh, Ya Rahman, Ya Rahim, and all this. Then make your dua. Sorry? Islam, Islam. Can you please repeat that order again, please? Okay, sincerity, of course, right? Your intention is for the sake of Allah that you want to make dua. We know dua is a, a form of worship. You don't ask anybody else, not the grave, not your shuyuks, but ask Allah. Isn't it true? Sincerity. Intention must come first. Secondly, you have this, uh, you need to, uh, to praise Allah. Alhamdulillah, or subhanallah, you glorify Allah, right? Thirdly, send blessings to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, or Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allah Nabi Muhammad, or in English, right? Fourthly, ask Allah for forgiveness, right? Rabbi khfirli, astaghfirullah, in anything, the best is 2187. Number five, use Allah's beautiful names. Didn't Allah ask us to use his beautiful, beautiful names to ask from him, right? I think is, if I'm not mistaken, in surah number seven, in verse number 180, right? 780, Allah said, and, and listen to this, right? وَلِلَّهِ الْأَسْمَاءُ husna فَدْعُوهُ biha, Right? And to Allah belongs the most beautiful names, so call on Him by them. Right? 780. Isn't it true? Right? So Allah did request or persuading you and I Use his beautiful names and call him by that name. Right? Very simple, right? Because you learn Al Fatiha, right? Just say, Ya Rahman. So when you say Ya, you can say Ya Ar Rahman. Forget about Al, right? Except Allah, of course. Ya Allah, right? You can say Ya Rab, Ya Rahman, Ya Rahim, yeah? Um, the, if, if you are so um, tight in the situation, the problems, you say Ya Fatah to open up open up new doors, yeah, um, you can see Ya Razak, yeah, the one who provides you, yeah, Ya Karim, the generous one, so use his names in order to um, connect with Allah, okay, then make your dua, it's not long, honestly, right, at the most it take about a few, about maybe 30 seconds to do this, but it is, it, it is for your own good, inshallah, okay, this etiquette of making dua, any other questions, brothers?
Ustad, a quick question. You know the yes. dua, is it better to make it in sujood or after tashahud? I think the best dua is always, always in your prayer. Right? So, Remember the, 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 the hadith, uh, the closest a person is to Allah in, in, is in his prostrations. Muhammad Sassan said, make a lot of dua in your prostration. So, of course, brothers, if you're praying with the Imam in the mosque, Imam is quite far, isn't it? so you cannot make a lot of dua. In your own sunnah prayer, in your tahajjud at night, right, or the duha in the early morning, then you make a dua that is longer. You're then sorry, so you do your more longer prostration, isn't it true? Inshallah. Okay. Um, now, let's continue, inshallah. What are the other mistakes? Um, that they don't have yaqeen. And this is quite common, isn't it true? And this is, brothers, I can guarantee you, subhanAllah. Of course, it occurs to me, right? Um, I always tell myself, no matter how difficult it is, nothing is impossible for Allah. The fact that people have no yaqeen, no certainty Allah can answer your dua, something must be wrong. And that makes your dua not able to be answered. You must have yaqeen, certainty. I mean, it occurs in my own personal self. It occurs to my clients. I mean, dua for my clients and all this. It was so difficult case. Alhamdulillah, from Allah, of course. They got, you know, approved by home office and all this, got a visa and all this. On many occasions, not just one or two, right? But you must have this yaqeen. That's why you must not say, and I notice some people say this, may Allah forgive you, inshallah, right? When you say may, it's really a dua, isn't it true, right? So you don't say may Allah forgive you or may Allah increase your provisions, inshallah, because you don't say inshallah, because then you have no certainty with Allah. So, you, of course, of course, we know everything is from Allah. It's up to Allah. But we don't say we must have certainty that Allah can answer any of our du'a. Okay, so this is the common mistake. You have no yakin. We know how many how many stories have you had? The doctors give this person, oh, you only have two weeks to live, and they have, after three years they're still living now. Isn't it true? Right? Everything is from Allah. Right? Not from the doctor. Right? Not from anybody else in terms of our lifespan. Okay. Now the next one means another mistake, not beseeching and humbling ourselves, hoping for Allah's reward and fearing his punishment. Right? In Surah number 7, verse number 55, Allah said, Invoke your Lord with humility and in secret he do not like the aggressors. So it's always good to be making dua alone. For me personally, it's my opinion, of course, um, that... Um, that we should make dua individually, not as a group. And in fact, some scholars did say that making dua as a group in after prayers is an innovation, so we should avoid that. Okay, so uh, do it in secret. That's why the best time to make dua is it is always in your tahajjud, isn't it true? When you're all alone, first of all, you are invited by Allah Subhanallah to wake up to face Him, and Allah Himself said in in His hadith in this hadith Qudsi, right? He said, "Where among my servants?" Who want me to forgive him? I'll forgive him. Where among my, where uh, among my where are my servants who want me to uh, who want to ask me for anything? I will grant him. And this occurs every night. So we do need to take advantage of this. Okay. Um. And I think for me personally, when when you wake up at night, especially you are, you are quite. Um. I feel very humbled that I'm invited by Allah and it's privileged that Alhamdulillah. Um, Allah is us wanting to meet me and I respond to the call and this is quite personal uh, with me and Allah so and you know how special it is that prayer tahajjud and when those who are prayed tahajjud you will know right so do make an effort because this is the best time to make dua when Allah is at the lowest skies listening to our call our, our dua okay the next one next common mistake is a lot of people they do not understand what they are making dua Right? Yes, Rabbana Atina Fiduna Hasna. You don't know what it means. You just memorize when you were young. The meaning itself, Rabbana itself, is huge, isn't it? To the Rabbana. What does Rabbana mean? What does the Rob mean? My creator or something. The creator. The provider of everything. Provides, the one who protects, the one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It covers everything, isn't it? True? Almost everything. Right? And when you say Rabbana and you know what it means, you are invoking Allah's beautiful names. 
and itself is a huge thing, right? So make sure you know what it means because if you want Allah to forgive you, you do need to know what you are saying is it true, right? Um, so this is something that we do need to uh, really, um, because of course Arabic is not our first language. We do need, I myself need sometimes to research, make sure I don't get the meaning wrong. So it, I feel in the heart, not from the mouth, right? And and then, right, I will, after making dua, inshallah, I would always, well, wait for the effect. If it doesn't come, alhamdulillah, I repeat again. And, you know, you are always hopeful, right? But at the same you yaqeen, you are certain Allah is going to answer dua. If not, inshallah, be patient. It will be answered in the hereafter, okay? Now, another common mistake is, as I said just now, being too hasty for your dua to be answered, right? And in hadith from a Muslim, from Abu Hurairah, from Muslim said, the servant's dua will be answered provided he is he he does not ask for what is sinful, or for making for the breaking of the relationships, and also if he does not show impatience. Open to Allah, the the companions ask, right? What is showing impatience? He replied, the servant says, I invoked, I invoked, I invoked, but I do not think my invocation was answered, and he becomes disappointed and abandons the dua. So never abandon any dua. Right, as I said just now, perhaps the du'a is a worship anyway, so you get a reward. Whatever things that you 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 make du'a, of course, provided it's not as this hadith said, no, it's not a, a sinful thing, uh, or causing uh, the breaking up of your relationships with your kinship, yeah, your relatives and all this. Right. Other than that, it will be answered. You get a reward in the hereafter. That is the the best, isn't it, true? Inshallah. Okay. Now. Another mistake is that you don't repeat the du'a more than once. That means you give up after that. You said Allah didn't answer my du'a. I won't ask again. No, you should, you should repeat at least three times at least. Right? If not, well, just be hopeful that it will come What's one that? day. Oh, yes. Sorry to interrupt you. Yes. Is there, is there a hadith that mentions that for a du'a to be answered, you have to minimum uh, ask for it three times or something? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, so okay. there's, a, there's a few hadith regarding this, right? Um, another one, Ibn Mas'ud, who narrated from Muhammad liked to say a dua three times and ask for forgiveness three times. This was narrated by Abu Dawud and an Nasa'i. Okay, so yeah, don't give up, right? Even though you have to repeat it the whole dua ten times, whatever it is, just it is it's form of worship, and anyway, you get the reward, inshallah. Because why? Because you don't ask for anybody else. Because you're not, you're not asking from the dead, you're not asking from the from the Yashu, you're asking from Allah directly. And this is a form of worship. And He loves you and I who are relying on Him only. Isn't it true? Right? And this is part of how we said just now, Hasbunallah wa ni'mal wakil. Allah is alone is sufficient for us. He is the best disposer of our affairs. We, we declare that. Right? We trust Allah, whatever this is the consequence. Brothers, don't, don't think that when all, your dua is not answered, Allah do not love you. There are many, many things that 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 happens right in the times of people in the um, what do you call it in the Quran. Right? I'm sure, right? You and I know. I'm sure Nuh salam wouldn't want his son to be drowned, isn't it true? I'm sure he made the best dua for his children, but one of his son became a disbeliever and he was drowned. I'm sure, of course, he made dua for his um, um, a wife to be pious, but his wife wasn't. I'm sure Lut was making dua for his children and his wife also, but which were wife of Lut would be in hellfire. So many, many things are happening in even in the Prophet's life that dua wasn't answered, but you know, that doesn't mean Allah do not love you. And this is what is very important thing not to give up, not to let shaitan go into your mind and say, Oh, you know, you're working so hard, as I said just now, you don't even achieve what you want. This person wasn't even praying, this, this is worse, not even not even a Muslim. It has all these luxuries in the world. So what? Right? Right? This is just the things in this life. Right? Most important thing, thing is, is that our relationship with Allah is very close, inshallah. Right? The patience goes a long way, inshallah. Okay? Um, the next one, not last before we end, inshallah, a few things. Uh, not taking advantage of the specific uh, times or positions uh, of that will make the dua more effective. Why, why do I say this? For example, between Adhan and Iqamah, for example, right? especially when you're praying in the mosque, don't spend this time looking up at your Facebook, looking at your mobile phones. Make a lot of dua, inshallah, because it's one of the best times to make dua. Isn't it true? Take advantage of those people who are sick. Visit them. right? When you visit them, what happened? The angels are making dua. Yep. 
do I have for you? 70,000 angels in the room will accompany you until the next day, asking Allah to forgive you. On top of that, inshallah, the deceased, one of the best dua comes from a person who is ill, right? So the disease, uh, sorry, not this is the, the one who is ill, right? The one who was ill would make dua for you, inshallah, and that is the best dua. So do not, so, so take advantage of this time to make dua. Uh, before, during fasting, before breaking your fast, or again, don't wait for your mother or your sister to cook the food and finish the food and just watch there doing nothing, watching for the food to come, right? Ramadan is coming. You do need to make a lot of dua, inshallah, right? That's the best time to make dua is before iftar, inshallah, right? So 10 minutes before iftar, make a lot of dua, inshallah. Other than that, as I said just now, in the uh, last hours of the night, right? Uh, one third, last third of the night, make a lot of dua because Allah is the lowest heaven. Another time to make dua, inshallah, is, for example, your prostration. We discussed just now. Um, uh, before you say salam, right? Um, yeah, many, many parts to make dua. Uh, in um, When you are traveling, right? Uh, it's the best time to make dua. When you yourself are sick, make best time to make dua. So all this hadith, you can read in my notes, inshallah, at the best time. So take advantage of this best time to make a lot of dua. That doesn't mean, of course, brothers, other times you cannot make dua, you can make any time, but these are the specific time that you should make dua or more dua, inshallah. Okay? Friday, for example, right? Friday, last hour, right? Before uh, the Maghrib is the best time to make dua. So many, many uh, times um, that we can make dua in rain, right? All these, I have about over 30 least of number, uh, more than 30 a period of time that the best time to make dua, inshallah. Okay. Now, if you can, right, face the qibla. If you do not know qibla, then it's okay. Your dua will still be answered, inshallah. But this is the this is a sunnah, right? If you can, to face the qibla, because Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, when we make he make dua a few times, he face the qibla. Okay. Um, wudu, right? Is it necessary to make to make wudu for making dua? No. It's not, but I think it's good. Yeah, it will stand. Because, right. can I mention one of the hadiths that the yes. Prophet said yes. that he, uh, he didn't mention, he didn't even mention Allah. No, he said he didn't like to mention Allah with you not know, being clean or something. No. Yeah, because he was, he, was, he was in the toilet, isn't it true? Right? And didn't give salam. Somebody gave a salam and he didn't answer back. Uh, yeah. Right? Yeah. So I think I would, I mean, if it, it's not a must, but I wouldn't want to make dua if, if I don't have wudu. Because, of course, brothers, we have our sisters, we have menstruations and all this. Of course, they can make dua, right? Even though they, in the, their menstruation, of course, they cannot take wudu and all this. Allah will still say the dua. But it is, it is best for you and I who, who have no such problems. We do need to, we should take wudu, right? Before we make dua. But if not, for whatever reasons, well, you know, do Make dua still, right? If you if you have no wudu, okay. Crying, is crying good? Yes. I think crying. I don't know about you. I'm quite a cry baby sometimes. You know, it, it it does bring you so close to Allah because at the end of the day, you really feel that you are so close to Allah that you are, you know, you are affected by your sins, by your um, the things that you want. And you are so grateful that you are able to make dua. All these kind of things come and, and you know, despite all this, you are still so grateful to Allah. That's why you, I mean, to cry is good because it does um, have this effect on um, yourself and your sincerity to Allah. But that means it doesn't come only from the mouth, but it comes from the heart. Okay, so for those who have not cried before, hmm, pinch yourself. You should try to cry, inshallah, okay? Um... Raising hands, right? Now, is it a must to raise your hands in dua? No. No. It's not, okay? But there is a dua because, okay, let, let me differentiate this hadith, right? There is a dua, right? We stated that Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam um, said that uh, when you ask Allah, ask Allah of him with the palms of your hands, uh, no, no, this is not in the hadith, right? Uh, your Lord is kind and most generous, and he is too kind to let his slaves 
down if he raises the hands and bring back empty. That means Allah will be shy not to answer the dua. Yes, this is one hadith class as Sahih by Sheikh Albani from Abu Dawood. But we never seen any hadith that stated Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam whenever he, he make any dua, he would raise up the hands to make dua. Right? So, for example, right, and I've seen this many times, um, would, sh let's say you uh, finish your wudu, right? Would you raise up your hands and make dua all the time? What is the dua, dua after wudu? Brothers? Um, another one of them is, is the Shahada, but it's um, Ashadu wa la ilaha yawallahu wa hadahu la sharika lahu wa hadahu wa na muhammadin wa hadahu wa rasuluhu. So when we make this dua, what is the, what is the reward? I don't know. Now, Paradise has how many gates? Eight. It's eight, a free. Eight. eight. Right, one gate is for uh, called arayan for fasting. One gate for the generous person. One gate for the jihad and all these kind of things. Right, but if you make this dua sincerely, all the gates of paradise are open and you can enter from any one of them. Right, because uh, and and but there is no hadith that Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam will always raise up the hands and make dua. So you do not need to do so. Right, so what? So I do see I did see people raise up their hands. I don't think you should do that. Because it's not in any hadith that he we, he raised up the hand. If you want once in a while, yes, but not all the time. When you leave the house, right, and in the morning you know, to work, you say Bismillah, Tawakkal to Allah, Walla Hawla Walla Quwwata Illa Billah. Is it? Do you raise up the hands? No. 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 Right. So always be careful in this. Even though there's a hadith that when Allah will always feel shy not to answer your dua when you raise up the hands. But we we have no hadith at all. We stated that Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam always raise up the hands. And for me personally, this also goes the same for the dua after the prayer. If there is such a hadith, right? Because everybody would see Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam prayers. Isn't it true? There would be a hadith saying that after the prayer, we always see Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam raise up the hands and make dua. But there's no hadith. Yes, isn't that? It, where the Prophet raised the hand up to the sky when he really needed something. Sorry? Yeah, we're going to talk about it later, inshallah. Okay. Sabar. Sabar. Right? But I'm just talking about the raising of my hands, right? If you raise, I will raise up my hands sometimes, I don't raise up my hands sometimes. So, because I don't want to make it an innovation. Okay? And this is how I recommend people. Um, but of course, when the hadith, when remember we said the three calls, you raise up the hands, blow and say the trickles and you uh, wipe over your body, isn't it true, right? Uh, in another, another hadith, uh, when you go, go to Umrah later, you will know, right? In certain parts of the stations, um, you raise up your hands to make dua, right? Around the Kaaba, when you, after you do Salah, you raise up your hands for, for the Multazam. Um, for the Hajj itself, in some, uh, when you throw stones, you go to the side, after that, you make dua, you raise up your hands. So all these are authenticated. Other than that, you don't do it all the time in order because if you do that all the time for me personally it will become an innovation okay so do be careful in this okay so even after salah itself right you do not need to raise up your hands all the time to make dua right sometimes you raise up sometimes you don't raise up okay um yes yeah, as, as elmi say just now how do you raise up your hands is it this way is it this way is it this way or what what, what is it Is it closed together like this? The, yeah, closed. The Prophet used to close the. Yes, yeah, closed. Yeah. Because I see people like this, like this, like this. You, if you if you want to raise up their hands, raise up properly. Isn't it true? Right here, like this, close. I'm just reading a high focus of the of the TV of the camera right here. Right. If you're desperate, this is where you raise up and then separate. Right, you are so desperate, there's no rain for so many weeks, and then you want rain. Yes, this is desperate measures. Right, but at all times in general, it's close together, your palms close and facing up, not facing down, facing up. Okay, if you wish to do so. Questions? I'll start. Uh, yes. quick one. So, you know, the um, istikhara is that a form of dua, or is that something else entirely? It is, right? Because you're asking Allah for counsel, isn't it true? Mm -hmm. So you pray, 
um, you 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 pray to Raka'ah after you say salam, then you make your du'a. Either you raise up your hand or not. There's no clear hadith that Sayyid Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam always raises up the hand. Mm -hmm. right. Okay. Thank you. So yes. just read from their notes in English, inshallah. Mm. Okay. Lastly, <laughs> brothers, you do need to choose the if you want to say your du'a in your own language, right? You do need to choose a very clear and concise words. Don't go round and round and round and round. You know, it's, uh, it's, it's quite confusing, right? Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam always choose the most clearest words for the dua and very simple. Okay, so these are the things that I hope today's talk, inshallah, will be um, useful, right, for the future Inshallah, when you make dua, right? Don't commit the same mistakes that we discussed just now. Uh, try to improve ourselves, especially in the etiquette of making dua. The times of making dua are very important. Um, be yaqeen or certain that Allah will answer your dua. If Allah does not answer your dua for whatever reasons, it's always for your own good, right? And inshallah, we get the reward in the hereafter. Um, do not say inshallah after you make a dua, right? It's not allowed. Um, so, Choose the best times right, to make dua, and this is so. All these things we discussed today are inshallah to help you and I to prepare for Ramadan, of course, because Ramadan is actually the, the time that we make a lot of dua. Um, any questions so far? Last question, okay. If not, we will start, uh, quick, yes, just quickly. Um, after you made the dua, do you have do you should you say amin to it? Yes, you say amin, right? But not like your culture, not this, huh? No, no, no I, I never do that myself. <laughs> I, I just said you have your culture, right? And yeah, culture, I know, I know. Right? Yeah, we of course. Do, no, and it, we don't, we don't this. The most of, if you want to reset your hand, that's it. Just, just bring down, right? <coughs> so, avoid all these innovations. Okay. Any last questions? Uh, yeah, we'll start. Yes. Sorry, it's, uh, it's a quick right. one. It's it, it's actually quite funny because you meant because because uh, the the thing that you just did right there where you like rub your palms on your face. Yes. Um, do you ever do that after your salah, or do you never do that at all? Because that is very never do that after salah. It that is, is not in any any. The Muhammad Sallam did never do that. Sahaba never did that. Don't know where it comes from, right? Uh, uh, I'm, I'm ashamed to say it, it's very popular in my in my culture. Yeah, yeah not just yours. My culture also the same. I have to admit, in Bangladesh is. Pakistan is all the same, right? Okay. You, you answer this no, you no, don't. I think it's sad. I think yes. All right, thank you, Ustad. Other questions? El, El me? No, I think this came from Indonesia, this Bida. No, Indonesia is that is that Ferrari Imams, that the that the, 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 the <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, no, that one. Okay, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, improve our improve our knowledge, improve our ability to 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 make uh, the quality of du'a that we make. May Allah Subhanahu wa Taala answer all our du'a, right, and responds in a positive way that we it is uh, to our liking. And if not in this world, in the hereafter, may Allah Subhanahu wa Taala allow all of us to meet the month of Ramadan. May Allah Subhanahu wa Taala increase our ability to ask for His forgiveness, to be grateful to Him, and may Allah Subhanahu wa Taala grant all of us Jannatul Firdaus. Subhanakallah wa manu shudala la anta wa astaghfiruka wa tuubi laik. Subhan Rabbika Rabbil Inzat ma yasifun wa salamu ala al mursalin wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazakumul khair. Inshallah, we'll see you tomorrow. Yeah. Wa alaikum assalam. Jazakumul khair. Assalamu alaikum.